glad to produce, publish, and offer. Persuasion Mastery How to Get Anything You Want from Anyone By Sage D. Esso Treasure Ever noticed how some people seem to navigate the complex terrain of human interaction with ease, always managing to get what they want without breaking a sweat? The art of persuasion may appear as though it's a natural gift reserved for a select few, but the truth is, it's a skill that anyone can learn and master. This journey into the world of influence unveils the techniques that allow you to steer conversations, sway opinions, and effortlessly inspire action. By harnessing these strategies, you'll transform both your personal and professional life, while others continue to wonder how you manage to achieve your goals so smoothly. Persuasion is more than a useful skill, it's an essential tool in the social toolkit. The difference between those who merely float through life and those who actively shape their circumstances often lies in their ability to influence others. And this isn't manipulation or trickery, it's about understanding how to communicate in ways that align with human psychology fostering cooperation, and driving mutually beneficial outcomes. Imagine walking into any conversation equipped with the confidence to turn the tide in your favor. Whether it's a heated debate, a casual conversation with friends, or a high-stakes business negotiation, knowing how to influence people will change the way you interact with the world. The power of persuasion isn't about domination, it's about inspiring action and fostering agreement through understanding. At the heart of persuasion lies the ability to influence. Social influence is an everyday occurrence, though we often fail to recognize it. From convincing a friend to try a new restaurant to pitching a novel idea at work, Persuasion is at play in both small interactions and larger, more significant moments in life. The key realization here is that persuasion isn't a mystical art, it's a systematic process rooted in both creativity and science. In fact, persuasion can be broken down into distinct types of influence. Understanding these is the first step toward mastering the art of persuasion. Coercive influence, this relies on the threat of negative consequences. While it can be effective in the short term, it often leads to resistance and resentment. Legitimate influence, this type is based on an accepted position of authority. A leader or a figure with recognized power can command respect and compliance. Expert influence, when someone holds specialized knowledge, their ability to influence stems from that expertise. People often look to experts for guidance when they feel uncertain. Referent influence. This is about likability and the strength of personal relationships. People are more likely to be persuaded by someone they admire or feel connected to. Reward-based influence, offering something in exchange for compliance is at the core of this type. Positive reinforcement can be a strong motivator for action. Each of these types of influence has its place, and knowing when and how to apply them is critical to becoming a skilled persuader. As you delve into these concepts, you'll learn how to integrate them seamlessly into your communication. The goal is to develop a versatile approach, allowing you to adapt your style based on the situation and the individuals involved. But it's not enough just to understand these theories. 
To truly master persuasion, you'll need to practice applying these techniques in real-world scenarios. This book isn't just about passive learning, it's a guide to changing the way you approach conversations and relationships, providing you with practical exercises to hone your skills. By the time you complete your initial read-through, you'll have a solid understanding of how to influence people. More importantly, you'll begin to see every interaction as an opportunity to practice and refine your persuasive abilities. Whether you're chatting with a coworker or negotiating a big deal, you'll start to identify the different types of influence at play, consciously applying them to guide the outcome. This shift in perspective is perhaps the most powerful transformation you'll experience. You'll no longer view communication as a passive activity, instead, you'll approach it with a strategic mindset, always considering how to steer conversations toward your desired results. This new awareness is the foundation of becoming a master persuader. As you progress, you'll notice the long-term benefits extending beyond individual conversations. Over time, the ability to influence will become second nature, whether you're resolving conflicts, motivating others, or simply sharing your point of view. Imagine walking into any room with the quiet confidence that you can shape the direction of the conversation making people feel heard and valued while still guiding them toward the outcome you envision. These are the subtle yet powerful skills that come from mastering persuasion. The process of mastering persuasion involves more than just learning clever lines or memorizing techniques. True persuasion is built on a foundation of understanding. You need to recognize which type of influence is most appropriate for any given situation and be flexible enough to adjust your approach as the conversation evolves. This adaptability, coupled with a deep knowledge of the principles behind influence, is what sets apart skilled persuaders from the rest. This book is designed to help you build that foundation. We start with the fundamentals, understanding the psychology of influence and the different types of persuasive tactics, before moving on to more advanced strategies. The goal is to provide you with a step-by-step -step guide that not only explains how persuasion works but also equips you with the tools to apply these lessons in your everyday life. You won't have to wait until you finish the book to start seeing results. From the very first chapter, you'll find insights and techniques that you can begin using immediately. Small changes in how you communicate can lead to noticeable shifts in how people respond to you. Whether it's something as simple as adjusting your tone of voice or using strategic pauses, these techniques can make a big difference in how effectively you influence others. As we move forward, we'll explore more advanced tactics that build on these foundational principles. For example, creating the right environment for persuasion is crucial. Subtle environmental cues, or priming, can have a significant impact on how receptive people are to your message. You'll learn how to set the stage for success before you even say a word, increasing your chances of a favorable outcome. But before diving into these techniques, take a moment to reflect on what you've learned so far. You've already taken the first step toward mastering persuasion by acknowledging that influence is a skill you can develop. With practice and dedication, 
you'll not only become more persuasive, but also more aware of the dynamics at play in every conversation. The art of persuasion is about more than getting what you want. It's about fostering positive relationships, encouraging cooperation, and creating win-win scenarios. By understanding the principles of influence and applying them with integrity, you can transform your ability to communicate and achieve success in all areas of life. Persuasion is an art that extends far beyond the words we speak. It's an intricate dance that often begins before a single word is uttered, shaped by the environment we create and the atmosphere we cultivate. When it comes to influencing others, setting the stage can often be as important as the content of the conversation itself. Think about those moments when everything just clicked, when the conversation flowed smoothly and everyone seemed on the same page. Chances are, the setting had a lot to do with it. The arrangement of the room, the ambience, the unspoken cues, all of these elements play a role in how receptive people are to your ideas. The importance of the environment and persuasive communication is something that most people overlook. Yet, it's a critical factor that can either enhance or hinder your ability to persuade. As we delve into this concept, you'll begin to see that persuasion doesn't just happen through words or arguments. It starts with the space you create, the mood you set and the subtle cues you offer. These invisible forces can be the difference between success and failure when it comes to influencing others. Why is the environment so important for persuasion? The answer lies in the way our brains process information. We like to think that we make decisions based on logic and reason, but in reality, our subconscious mind plays a massive role. It constantly absorbs and interprets signals from the world around us, influencing how we feel and, ultimately, how we respond. By taking control of these signals, by setting the stage, you can prime your audience to be more open and receptive to your message. Imagine a time when you were in a conversation where everything felt just right. Perhaps it was the calming background music, the soft lighting, or the comfortable seating arrangement that made you feel at ease. These elements, though seemingly insignificant, have a profound impact on how we process information and interact with others. When people feel comfortable, they're more likely to listen, engage, and be open to new ideas. On the flip side, if the environment is tense or uncomfortable, they may become defensive or closed off, making persuasion much more difficult. This is where the concept of environmental control comes into play. By consciously shaping the space and atmosphere in which your communication takes place, you can dramatically increase your chances of persuading others. It's much like setting the pieces on a chessboard, positioning everything in just the right way to give yourself the upper hand before the game even begins. But it's not just the physical environment that matters. There's also the psychological element of priming, a powerful tool in the world of influence. Priming is the process of subtly exposing someone to a stimulus that makes them more receptive to a subsequent message. For example, if you want to persuade someone to invest in a tech startup, you might arrange for them to see news articles or statistics about the booming technology sector before your meeting. 
These subtle cues help shape their mindset, making them more likely to respond positively to your proposal. While priming and environmental control focus on external factors, nonverbal communication is another critical aspect of setting the stage. Your body language, facial expressions, and even the way you position yourself in a room send powerful messages that can either reinforce or weaken your verbal communication. People often interpret nonverbal cues subconsciously, so presenting confident, open body language can make others more likely to trust you and agree with what you're saying. Conversely, nervous or closed-off body language can undermine your message, no matter how compelling your words may be. Consider, for instance, how standing too close to someone might make them feel uncomfortable, while maintaining a respectful distance can create a sense of trust and ease. The same goes for your posture and gestures. Leaning slightly forward can indicate interest in engagement, while crossing your arms might signal defensiveness. Even something as simple as eye contact can make a significant difference in how your message is received. Another often overlooked element of nonverbal persuasion is your choice of clothing. The way you dress sends a message, whether you realize it or not. However, this doesn't mean you need to wear the most expensive suit or follow the latest fashion trends. Instead, your attire should be appropriate for the context and should help reinforce the image you want to project. If you want to come across as competent and trustworthy, your clothing should reflect that. Putting all of these elements together, environmental control, priming, body language, and even your attire, creates a holistic approach to persuasion. It's not about manipulating others or forcing them to see things your way. Rather, it's about creating the optimal conditions for open, honest, and effective communication. So, how can you start applying these principles in your everyday interactions? Start small. Experiment with different environments in casual conversations and take note of the results. Does changing the seating arrangement make a difference in how the conversation flows? Does the mood of the room seem to affect people's openness to your ideas? Pay attention to how these subtle factors influence the outcome of your discussions. You can also practice priming by thinking about what kind of mindset you want the other person to be in before an important conversation. What subtle cues or information could you present to help put them in that state of mind? For example, if you're trying to persuade someone to support a new initiative at work, you might mention recent successes or share stories of similar initiatives that have gone well before diving into the specifics of your proposal. The beauty of these techniques is that they are not about forcing your will onto others, but about creating an environment where meaningful dialogue can flourish. Persuasion becomes a collaborative process rather than a one-sided effort leading to outcomes that benefit everyone involved. In the end, persuasion is more than just the words you use, it's about setting the stage for success. The environment you create, the mood you set, and the unspoken signals you send can all have a profound impact on your ability to influence others. By mastering these aspects of persuasion, you'll be well on your way to becoming a more effective communicator and a more influential person in all areas of your life. Persuasion, 
at its core, is not merely a matter of delivering compelling arguments, it also involves tapping into the less obvious but equally influential dynamics of human behavior. This is where environmental factors and nonverbal communication come into play. But these elements require careful consideration. One common pitfall is assuming that the same strategies work in every setting. What might be effective in one context may not be as potent in another. To navigate this, it's essential to stay observant and adaptable, constantly reading the room, gauging reactions, and adjusting your approach as needed. Another mistake people make is relying too heavily on nonverbal cues at the expense of verbal communication. While body language and environmental factors significantly impact persuasion, they should serve to enhance, not replace, clear and direct verbal messaging. Strive for a balance, integrating both nonverbal and verbal techniques to create a holistic and effective persuasive approach. Reflect for a moment on the environments you experience daily, whether at work, at home, or in social settings. How might these surroundings be influencing your thoughts and actions? More importantly, how can you consciously harness the power of environmental influence to bolster your persuasive efforts? As you ponder these questions, remember that mastering the art of persuasion is just beginning with setting the right stage. In the next phase, we will explore the hidden psychological triggers that govern human behavior. Once you understand these triggers, you'll possess a new level of influence and insight into the decision-making process. The world of persuasion isn't just about external factors like the environment or body language. There are also internal mechanisms at play, psychological triggers that can sway decisions and shape opinions in ways that aren't immediately obvious. These triggers tap into deep-seated patterns of thought and behavior that operate below the level of conscious awareness. By understanding these mechanisms, you can tailor your persuasive efforts to align with how people naturally make decisions. One of the most fascinating aspects of human decision-making is how much of it happens subconsciously. Our brains are bombarded with an overwhelming amount of information daily, far more than we can consciously process. To cope, we've developed mental shortcuts, heuristics, that allow us to make quick decisions. While these shortcuts are often helpful, they also make us vulnerable to cognitive biases, systematic errors and thinking that skew our judgment. By understanding these biases, you can guide people's decisions in ways that feel natural and intuitive. The principle of reciprocity is one of the most powerful psychological triggers available. This principle is based on a deeply ingrained social rule. When someone does something for us, we feel a natural obligation to return the favor. For example, if a coworker buys you lunch unexpectedly, you'll likely feel a desire to repay them somehow, even if it's with a small gesture like offering to help with a task. In the realm of persuasion, offering something of value up front, whether it's a favor, useful information, or assistance, creates a subtle pressure for the other person to reciprocate. By initiating this exchange, you set the stage for a more favorable outcome. 
Another psychological trigger that can dramatically impact decision-making is scarcity. Humans naturally value things that are rare or in limited supply. This explains why marketing strategies like limited time offers or while supplies last are so effective. When we believe something is scarce, our desire to obtain it intensifies, and we feel compelled to act quickly. This principle doesn't only apply to physical goods, it can be just as powerful when dealing with opportunities, information, or even attention. By framing your ideas or proposals as unique or time-sensitive, you can create a sense of urgency that motivates people to take action. However, it's crucial to recognize that these triggers are not manipulative tricks. They are natural aspects of human psychology, and when used ethically, they can facilitate more effective communication and understanding. The goal is not to exploit someone's vulnerabilities but to align your persuasive efforts with the way people naturally think and behave. This leads to more genuine and mutually beneficial outcomes. Cognitive biases are another critical component of the persuasion puzzle. These biases are patterns of deviation from rational judgment that influence our decision-making processes, often without us realizing it. One of the most pervasive is confirmation bias, the tendency to seek out, interpret, and remember information in a way that confirms our pre-existing beliefs. This bias can be both a challenge and an opportunity for the persuasive communicator. On the one hand, it can make it difficult to change someone's deeply held beliefs. On the other hand, if you frame your message in a way that aligns with their current worldview, they're more likely to accept and internalize it. Another powerful bias to be aware of is the authority bias. This bias reflects our tendency to attribute more weight and credibility to the opinions of authority figures. This is why endorsements from experts, celebrities, or respected individuals can be so influential in shaping public opinion. By establishing your own credibility or associating your message with trusted authorities, you can enhance your persuasive power and make your arguments more compelling. Understanding these psychological principles not only helps you influence others, but also gives you insight into your own decision-making processes. By becoming more aware of your cognitive biases, you can make more rational and informed decisions in both your personal and professional life. This heightened awareness also makes you more resilient to the influence tactics others may use on you, allowing you to approach situations with a clearer and more objective mindset. To start applying these principles, Pay attention to how psychological triggers and biases play out in your daily interactions. Notice how people respond when you offer something of value first, or how urgency affects their decision making. Be mindful of the impact of authority figures on others' opinions, and look for confirmation bias in conversations whether it's helping or hindering effective communication. Once you've developed an awareness of these triggers, begin experimenting with them in your persuasive efforts. You could, for example, frame a proposal in terms of what someone stands to lose if they don't act, rather than what they stand to gain. This taps into loss aversion 
a bias where people are more motivated to avoid losses than to pursue equivalent gains. Similarly, you might try offering something small up front to activate the principle of reciprocity, creating a natural inclination for the other person to agree with your request. In the end, mastering persuasion involves both understanding external factors like environment and body language, as well as internal mechanisms like psychological triggers and cognitive biases. By blending these approaches, you'll be able to navigate the complex world of human decision-making with greater finesse and success. And as you refine your skills, you'll not only become more persuasive but also more attuned to the subtle forces that shape every interaction. The art of persuasion is more nuanced than it appears, woven intricately with psychological insights and the subtleties of language. As you embark on this journey into the depths of human behavior, it's vital to recognize the compelling forces at play, particularly scarcity and loss aversion. These elements are not merely concepts, they are tools that can shape perceptions and motivate decisions in profound ways. When you're crafting a persuasive argument, consider framing your message around what may be lost rather than what can be gained. For instance, rather than highlighting the advantages of a product, underscore its limited availability. This tactic taps into the principle of scarcity, compelling individuals to act quickly to avoid missing out. Similarly, establishing your authority and credibility prior to presenting your main argument can enhance your influence. This foundational trust can make your claims more convincing and resonate on a deeper level. However, as you practice these techniques, it's essential to remain grounded in ethical considerations. The aim isn't to manipulate but to facilitate effective communication. These psychological triggers are already influencing behavior, and understanding them equips you to navigate this complex psychological landscape more skillfully. Yet. Wielding these tools does come with potential pitfalls. A common misstep is misapplying triggers without fully understanding your audience. Motivations can vary dramatically from one individual to another. Observing, listening, and adapting your approach based on the specific context of your audience is key to effective persuasion. Another risk lies in over-relying on these techniques. While psychological triggers are powerful, they should enhance, not overshadow, substantive arguments and genuine value. Strive to maintain ethical standards and transparency in your persuasive efforts. Your objective should always be to guide individuals toward decisions that are genuinely in their best interest, not to trick them into actions they may later regret. As you reflect on the psychological triggers and cognitive biases we've explored, consider how they influence your own decision-making processes. How can this knowledge be utilized to communicate more persuasively? What shifts can you implement in your interactions to enhance your effectiveness? This exploration is just the beginning. In our next discussion, we will delve into the intricacies of crafting persuasive language. The words we choose can transform our ideas into compelling propositions. Once you grasp the power of linguistic persuasion, your perception of language may never be the same again. 
Language itself possesses a remarkable capacity to influence thoughts and actions. Have you ever noticed how a single word can shift the entire meaning of a sentence? Or how different presentations of the same idea can provoke entirely distinct reactions? Welcome to the captivating realm of linguistic persuasion, where language transcends mere communication and becomes a tool for shaping reality. At the heart of persuasive communication lies the concept of framing. This is the strategic presentation of information designed to influence perceptions and reactions. By carefully selecting words and structuring your message, you can guide your audience's thoughts and decisions in subtle yet impactful ways. For example, Consider these two statements, this investment has a 70% chance of success versus this investment has a 30% chance of failure. While both convey the same information, they evoke different psychological responses. This illustrates the profound effect of framing in action. Mastering framing not only enhances the clarity of your communication, but also amplifies its impact. It allows you to present your ideas in a manner that resonates deeply with your audience, ensuring your message is not just heard, but felt and internalized. As we dive deeper into the nuances of framing, we discover the importance of positive versus negative framing. Positive framing emphasizes benefits, while negative framing highlights potential losses. Recognizing your audience's motivations, whether they lean toward gains or are more sensitive to losses, enables you to tailor your approach effectively. Framing extends beyond merely presenting your ideas, it encompasses responding to objections and counterarguments. Here, the skill of reframing becomes essential. Reframing involves reinterpreting an objection or criticism in a manner that aligns with your objectives. For instance, if someone views a proposal as risky, you might reframe that risk as an opportunity for growth or innovation. By shifting perspectives, you can turn potential roadblocks into stepping stones toward agreement. Within the realm of linguistic persuasion, there are even more powerful tools at your disposal, persuasive language patterns. These specific methods of structuring language can bypass conscious resistance, speaking directly to the subconscious mind. One such pattern is the use of embedded commands. These are suggestions subtly integrated within larger sentences, often unnoticed by the conscious mind but picked up by the subconscious. For example, Instead of saying, you should consider this offer, you might phrase it as, as you consider this offer, you might find yourself getting excited about the possibilities. The embedded command to get excited is delivered subtly, reducing the likelihood of resistance. Another effective language pattern involves presuppositions and leading questions. Presuppositions are assumptions woven into a statement or question. By constructing your language carefully, you can guide individuals to accept certain ideas without directly stating them. For example, asking, how quickly do you want to see results, presupposes that the individual desires results, directing focus toward the time frame. Leading questions operate similarly, guiding people towards specific conclusions through their framing.
to put these concepts into practice, consistent observation and practice are crucial. Start by consciously framing your messages in various ways, noting how people respond. Pay attention to the language patterns used by skilled communicators in media, business, and politics, identifying the framing techniques they employ. You can also incorporate persuasive language patterns in low-stakes conversations. Experiment with embedded commands or presuppositions in your everyday speech, observing how these adjustments influence interactions. Over time, these techniques will become more natural and intuitive, enriching your ability to persuade effectively. Remember, the goal is to foster genuine understanding and connection, not to manipulate or deceive. By engaging thoughtfully with the nuances of language and the psychological triggers at play, you can elevate your communication skills, making your messages not just impactful but also ethically sound. Ultimately, the mastery of persuasion encompasses both psychological insights and linguistic finesse. By blending these approaches, you'll navigate the intricate landscape of human decision-making with greater skill and confidence. This journey into the art of persuasion is not merely about convincing others. It's about fostering meaningful connections and facilitating positive outcomes for everyone involved. Understanding the intricacies of communication is essential, especially when it comes to persuasion. The language we choose can be a powerful tool, yet it also comes with its own set of challenges. One of the most common issues is miscommunication. In our eagerness to frame messages persuasively, we might inadvertently create confusion or misunderstandings. It's crucial to remain attentive to how your audience reacts. If you feel your message isn't resonating, don't hesitate to clarify and reframe your points as needed. Another pitfall is the temptation to overcomplicate language in pursuit of sophistication. In striving to sound impressive, we may fall into the trap of using convoluted or flowery expressions. The objective should always be clarity and impact. Sometimes, the most profound messages are the simplest ones. Focus on articulating key ideas succinctly and compellingly. As we wrap up this exploration of language, take a moment to reflect on the potency of words. Consider how you can utilize framing to convey your ideas more effectively. How might you integrate persuasive language patterns into your daily communication? Remember that mastering language is a lifelong endeavor, what we've discussed is merely the beginning. In our next discussion, we will venture into a realm of persuasion that transcends mere words, a domain where emotions and intuitions take the lead. Are you prepared to explore the secrets of emotional influence? Get ready to discover how the heart can often serve as a more compelling persuader than the mind. Have you ever paused to think about why certain messages resonate so deeply with us while others leave us indifferent, regardless of their logic? Why do specific speakers captivate us, their words seemingly bypassing our rational minds to connect directly with our emotions? Welcome to the world of emotional leverage, where the essence of persuasion lies not in statistics or facts, but in the subtleties of human feeling. As we delve into this chapter, 
we will explore a dimension of influence that extends beyond mere words and logic. Emotions are powerful forces that often operate beneath our conscious awareness, shaping our perceptions, guiding our decisions, and ultimately driving our actions. This is the playground of master persuaders, the arena where significant transformations occur. So, why are emotions so crucial in the art of persuasion? The answer lies in the nature of human decision-making. We like to believe that we are rational beings, carefully weighing the pros and cons before making choices. However, the reality is far more intricate. Our emotions often serve as silent drivers of our decisions, with our rational minds merely justifying choices we have already made emotionally. This is not a flaw in our cognitive processes but rather a feature of human nature. Emotions function as a rapid response system, enabling us to make quick judgments in complex situations. They have evolved over millions of years to help us navigate the intricacies of social interactions and survival. By aligning your persuasive efforts with these emotional drivers, you can tap into an immense reservoir of influence that logic alone cannot provide. When you appeal to someone's emotions, you're not just relaying information, you're forging a connection building rapport, and laying the groundwork for genuine persuasion. But how can we effectively harness this emotional power? The key lies in developing emotional intelligence, the ability to recognize, understand, and manage both your own emotions and those of others. This concept, popularized by psychologist Daniel Goleman, is central to mastering emotional leverage. A vital component of emotional intelligence is empathy, the capacity to comprehend and share the feelings of others. Empathy allows you to tune into your audience's emotional wavelength, grasping their unspoken needs and desires. It forms the bedrock upon which effective emotional persuasion is built. Consider this, you're attempting to persuade someone to support a new initiative. You could lay out a logical argument filled with facts and figures, or you could take the time to understand their emotional state. Are they excited about new possibilities? Or are they anxious about potential changes? By attuning yourself to these emotional cues, you can tailor your approach to resonate with their current feelings. This leads us to another powerful concept in emotional persuasion, mirroring an emotional contagion. Have you ever noticed how you tend to reflect the emotional state of those around you? This is emotional contagion in action, the phenomenon where emotions spread from one person to another. As a persuader, you can leverage this by consciously managing your emotional state. By projecting the emotions you wish to evoke, be it enthusiasm, calm, or determination, you can subtly influence your audience's emotional responses. This lays a robust foundation for your persuasive efforts. If you're enjoying this audiobook and finding value in the content, we kindly ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. A large portion of our listeners and viewers haven't subscribed yet, and by doing so, you'll help us grow and continue bringing you more high-quality audiobooks. Your support means a lot to us, and it's just one click away. So, 
go ahead and hit that subscribe button to stay connected and never miss out on our latest releases. Now, let's explore how to leverage specific emotional states in persuasion. One effective strategy is to appeal to primary emotions, those fundamental feelings hardwired into our psyche, such as fear, joy, anger, sadness, and surprise. Each of these emotions can serve as a potent motivator when used appropriately. For instance, fear can drive individuals to take action to avoid negative outcomes, while joy can inspire them to embrace new opportunities. The key is understanding which emotions are relevant to your persuasive goals and how to evoke them ethically and effectively. Storytelling is one of the most powerful tools for eliciting emotions. Humans are wired to respond to narratives, which engage our feelings in ways that raw data and facts cannot match. By crafting compelling stories that illustrate your points, you create an emotional connection with your audience that enhances the persuasiveness of your message. How can you put all of this into practice? As with any skill, consistent observation and practice are essential. Start by honing your ability to identify emotional cues in conversations. Pay attention not only to what people say, but also to how they say it. Notice their tone of voice, body language, and word choices, all of which provide insights into their emotional state. Additionally, practice using storytelling to evoke emotions in your everyday interactions. Incorporate short anecdotes or metaphors to illustrate your points and observe how your audience responds. Do they lean in, displaying greater engagement? Do their facial expressions change? These are signs that you are successfully connecting with their emotions. As you experiment with emotional leverage, remain mindful of potential pitfalls. A common issue is misreading emotions. It's easy to project our own feelings onto others or misinterpret subtle emotional cues. Active listening and careful observation are essential to avoid these missteps. If you're uncertain about someone's emotional state, don't hesitate to ask clarifying questions. Another risk involves relying too heavily on emotions at the expense of logic. While emotions are powerful, they shouldn't be the sole tool in your persuasive arsenal. The most effective persuasion combines emotional appeal with sound logical arguments creating a well-rounded and impactful approach. In conclusion, mastering emotional leverage involves recognizing the interplay between emotions and logic. By developing your emotional intelligence and honing your ability to connect with your audience on an emotional level, you enhance your persuasive skills. As you embark on this journey, Remember that effective persuasion is about fostering understanding and connection, ultimately guiding your audience toward positive outcomes. Striving for a harmonious balance between appealing to the heart and the mind is vital when communicating persuasive messages. As we conclude this discussion, Let's take a moment to reflect on the immense influence emotions wield in persuasion. How can emotional intelligence enhance your ability to persuade? Consider how storytelling and emotional appeals can be woven into your communication efforts. Remember that mastering emotional leverage is a continuous journey 
What we've examined here is merely a starting point. In our next discussion, we'll explore an aspect of persuasion that may initially seem at odds with what we've just discussed, the art of winning arguments through logic and reason. However, as you will soon discover, true masters of persuasion know how to blend emotional appeal and logical reasoning into an irresistible force of influence. Are you ready to become the ultimate persuader? Imagine yourself caught in the heat of a debate, your heart racing as your mind scrambles to find the perfect counterargument. Alternatively, picture a masterful speaker dismantling their opponent's arguments with ease, leaving the audience captivated. Welcome to the dynamic arena of argumentation where ideas collide and convictions are rigorously tested. As we delve deeper into this topic, prepare to uncover how to transform debates and disagreements into powerful opportunities for persuasion. This isn't merely about confrontation, it's about the intersection where logic and emotion coalesce to create a formidable influence. Why is it essential to master the art of argumentation for effective persuasion? The answer lies in understanding human interactions and decision-making processes. Disagreements and debates shouldn't be viewed as barriers to persuasion, instead, they offer unique opportunities. When someone disagrees with you, they engage and invest mental and emotional energy into the conversation. This engagement creates an opening for influence. By mastering argumentation, you can convert these moments of conflict into chances to showcase your ideas, demonstrate your credibility, and ultimately guide others toward your perspective. Additionally, the ability to construct well-reasoned arguments fosters trust and credibility. When you clearly articulate your position, supported by solid evidence and reasoning, you convey a level of thoughtfulness and intelligence that commands respect. This respect, in turn, makes others more receptive to your ideas and arguments. So. How do we effectively harness the power of argumentation? The key lies in understanding and applying the principles of argumentation theory. This field, with roots tracing back to ancient Greek philosophy, provides a framework for constructing and analyzing arguments. At its essence, it teaches us to use logic, reasoning, and rhetorical strategies to build compelling cases for our ideas. Central to argumentation theory is the concept of logical persuasion. This involves crafting arguments with a clear, rational structure, building a chain of reasoning that leads inevitably to your conclusion, making it difficult for others to find fault in your logic. To create a logical argument, start with a clear premise, which forms the foundation of your argument. Then, provide evidence or reasons that support this premise, followed by showing how this evidence logically leads to your conclusion. For instance, if your premise is that exercise is beneficial for health, you might provide evidence illustrating how exercise improves cardiovascular function, strengthens muscles, and reduces stress. Your conclusion might then be that people should incorporate regular exercise into their routines. However, mastering logical persuasion involves more than constructing your own arguments, it requires identifying and countering logical fallacies in others' arguments as well. 
logical fallacies are errors in reasoning that can make an argument seem more compelling than it truly is. By recognizing these fallacies, such as false dichotomies, ad hominem attacks, or appeals to ignorance, you can challenge weak arguments more effectively and bolster your own position. But relying solely on logic is insufficient. To truly excel in argumentation, one must also apply rhetorical strategies. This is where the teachings of Aristotle come into play, specifically his three modes of persuasion, ethos, pathos, and logos. Ethos pertains to the credibility or character of the speaker focusing on establishing oneself as a trustworthy and knowledgeable source. You can achieve this by demonstrating expertise, citing credible sources, or showing a history of reliability. Pathos, on the other hand, is about appealing to emotions. While we focus on logical argumentation, we cannot underestimate the power of emotion and persuasion. Skillfully evoking the right emotions can significantly enhance the impact and memorability of your arguments. Lastly, Logos pertains to the logical appeal, the use of reasoning and evidence to support your claims, closely aligning with the logical persuasion we previously discussed. A true master of argumentation seamlessly blends these three elements, establishing credibility, ethos, engaging the audience's emotions, pathos, and presenting a logical argument, logos. One effective rhetorical device that combines these elements is the use of rhetorical questions. These are questions posed not to elicit an answer but to make a point or provoke thought. For example, consider the question, if we don't act now, what kind of world are we leaving for our children? This question appeals to emotion, pathos, suggests the speaker's concern and foresight, ethos, and logically indicates the necessity for immediate action, logos. You might be wondering how to apply all these principles in practice. Like any skill, argumentation requires consistent practice and reflection. A beneficial way to hone your skills is by engaging in debates, not to spark conflict but to seek respectful intellectual discourse on topics you care about. In these discussions, focus on constructing logical arguments and practice identifying and avoiding logical fallacies. Simultaneously, be aware of how you utilize ethos, pathos, and logos to amplify your persuasive power. Another valuable exercise is to analyze speeches or debates delivered by skilled orators. Observe how they structure their arguments, establish credibility, appeal to emotions, and employ logic. Then, strive to implement these strategies in your own communications. As you experiment with these techniques, be mindful of potential pitfalls. One common challenge is misreading emotions. It's easy to project our feelings onto others or misinterpret subtle emotional cues. To avoid this, engage in active listening and careful observation. If you're uncertain about someone's emotional state, don't hesitate to ask clarifying questions. Additionally, beware of relying too heavily on emotions at the expense of logic. While emotions can be persuasive, they should not be the sole basis for your arguments. 
the most effective persuasion weaves together emotional appeal with solid logical reasoning, creating a well-rounded and impactful approach. In conclusion, mastering argumentation requires a nuanced understanding of both emotion and logic. By honing your emotional intelligence and learning to connect with your audience on an emotional level, you can significantly enhance your persuasive skills. As you embark on this journey, remember that effective persuasion fosters connection and understanding, guiding your audience toward positive outcomes. In the art of argumentation, Emotional escalation is a common pitfall. When debates heat up, it's all too easy to lose focus on the ultimate goal, persuasion. Instead, conversations can devolve into unproductive conflicts that go nowhere. If you sense this happening in your discussions, try to steer the conversation back toward common goals or shared values. By finding common ground, you can diffuse tensions and redirect energy into more productive channels. Another significant risk during arguments is the temptation to fall into logical fallacies. Even when we are aware of these pitfalls, it can be surprisingly easy to resort to fallacious reasoning, especially when emotions are running high. The key to maintaining logical integrity is vigilance, constantly examining your arguments for weaknesses. If you realize that you've employed a fallacy, don't shy away from admitting it. Acknowledging mistakes and reformulating your argument can demonstrate intellectual honesty, ultimately enhancing your credibility in the eyes of others. As we wrap up our discussion, let's reflect on the immense power that argumentation holds in the realm of persuasion. How can you utilize these techniques to transform disagreements into avenues of influence? How can you effectively blend logic, emotion, and credibility to craft more compelling arguments? Remember that mastering the art of argumentation is a journey of continuous learning and refinement. What we have explored is merely the foundation. Looking ahead, we will delve into a broader dimension of persuasion that transcends individual arguments and debates. We will explore the importance of building alliances and networks of influence, creating connections that amplify your persuasive power. Are you ready to learn how to not only persuade individuals but to rally entire groups to your cause? Have you ever wondered why some ideas seem to catch fire while others languish in obscurity? Why do certain individuals wield a magnetic influence, effortlessly swaying the opinions of those around them? Welcome to the complex world of social networks and alliances, where the true power of persuasion extends far beyond one-on-one -on -one interactions. As we embark on this next exploration, prepare to uncover the underlying architecture of influence that shapes our social dynamics. This is a dimension of persuasion where ideas gain momentum, where influence compounds, and where the ripple effects of your persuasive efforts can create significant waves of change. So why is building alliances crucial for effective persuasion? The answer lies in our inherently social nature. Our opinions, beliefs, and decisions are profoundly influenced by those around us. By understanding and leveraging this social dynamic, you can exponentially amplify your persuasive power. Consider this, when you persuade one person, 
you change just one mind. But when you build alliances and tap into social networks, each person you persuade can become an advocate for your ideas. Your influence then spreads not just through your direct efforts, but also through the connections and interactions of others, creating a multiplier effect that can dramatically extend the reach and impact of your persuasive efforts. Moreover, building alliances goes beyond merely expanding your reach, it also builds credibility and social proof. When others observe that your ideas are backed by a network of respected individuals or groups, they are more likely to take those ideas seriously. This social validation can serve as a powerful antidote to skepticism and resistance. So, how do you harness the power of social networks and alliances? The key lies in understanding the principles of social network theory. This field of study examines how social structures form, how information and influence flow through these structures, and how they impact individual and group behavior. Central to social network theory is the concept of social proof, a psychological phenomenon where individuals look to the actions and attitudes of others to guide their own behavior. It's why we are more inclined to try a bustling restaurant or believe information corroborated by multiple sources. As a persuader, you can leverage social proof by showcasing the support your ideas have already garnered. Highlight endorsements from respected individuals, share testimonials, or demonstrate widespread adoption of your concepts. The key is to illustrate that others, especially those whom your audience respects or identifies with, have already been convinced. Another critical component in building alliances is the strategic use of authority figures. People naturally tend to defer to those they perceive as authorities in specific fields. By aligning yourself with recognized experts or leaders, you can borrow their credibility, thereby enhancing your persuasive power. However, leveraging authority isn't just about connecting with famous names. It's about identifying and collaborating with individuals who hold influence within the specific networks you aim to impact. These could include community leaders, industry experts, or even informal influencers who shape opinions within their social circles. Now, let's delve deeper into the art of networking for persuasion. This process is not about merely collecting business cards or amassing social media connections. Rather, it's about cultivating strategic relationships that can amplify your influence and advance your objectives. The first step in effective networking is identifying the key players within your field or target audience. Who are the opinion leaders? Who holds the ear of decision makers? Who are the connectors that bridge various groups? By mapping out these influential nodes within your social network, you can focus your efforts where they will have the greatest impact. Once you've identified these key individuals, the next step is to foster genuine relationships with them. This involves finding common ground, demonstrating value, and building trust over time. Remember, the goal isn't to use people, it's to create mutually beneficial alliances. Look for ways to support others' goals while pursuing your own. As you cultivate these relationships, you'll begin to accumulate social capital, the goodwill, 
trust, and reciprocal obligations that exist within social networks. This social capital can be an invaluable resource in your persuasive efforts, allowing you to call on favors, access information and opportunities, and leverage the influence of others to support your objectives. But how can you put these principles into practice? One effective exercise is to map out your existing social network. Start by listing all the people you know who could potentially influence or be influenced by your persuasive efforts. Identify the connections between these individuals, who knows whom, who holds sway over others. As you create this map, look for opportunities to strengthen existing connections and forge new ones. Are there key influencers you should be building relationships with? Are there ways you could connect with individuals who hold sway within your target audience? In summary, mastering the art of persuasion involves understanding the critical roles of both argumentation and social dynamics. By refining your argumentation skills and building robust alliances, you can create a powerful framework for influence. This approach allows you to transform conflicts into opportunities and to amplify your persuasive reach exponentially. Embrace this journey, and remember that effective persuasion fosters not just individual change, but collective transformation. In the intricate web of human relationships, forging alliances can yield remarkable synergies. One of the most effective practices is to actively seek opportunities to collaborate with individuals or groups who share similar goals, even if they operate in different fields or sectors. By uniting around common objectives, you can form coalitions that significantly enhance your influence. As you explore these strategies, it's essential to remain mindful of potential pitfalls. One common issue is the risk of forming alliances that, while seemingly beneficial on paper, may not actually propel you toward your goals. To navigate this challenge, be clear about your objectives from the outset, and ensure that any alliances you establish genuinely serve those aims. If you find yourself in a partnership that doesn't align with your aspirations, don't hesitate to realign or even disengage respectfully. Another danger lies in over-relying on the authority of others or social proof, potentially undermining your own credibility. While harnessing the influence of established figures can be powerful, it's crucial to strike a balance by building your own authority and trustworthiness. Your ultimate aim should be to cultivate respect as a voice in your own right, rather than merely serving as a conduit for the influence of others. As we reflect on the significance of alliances and persuasion, consider how you might leverage your existing network to amplify your impact. What new connections could you forge to broaden your persuasive reach? Building alliances isn't about manipulation, it's about creating a network of mutually beneficial relationships that advance shared goals and foster positive change. Recognizing that our greatest accomplishments often stem from collective efforts is key to this process. Looking ahead, think about the next steps in your journey toward mastering persuasion. If forming alliances is about extending your influence outward, how can you ensure that the changes you catalyze through your persuasive efforts are not just widespread but enduring? 
prepare to uncover the art of solidifying your persuasive victories and creating lasting impacts. Are you ready to transform fleeting successes into enduring transformations? Have you ever experienced the thrill of winning someone over to your perspective, only to see their enthusiasm wane over time? Or perhaps you've witnessed an impressive persuasive effort that ultimately fell flat despite initial success. Welcome to the crucial, yet often overlooked, final stage of persuasion the art of solidifying victories and ensuring lasting impact. As we delve into this topic, we will uncover the secrets to turning fleeting triumphs into enduring transformations. This exploration will reveal a dimension of persuasion that extends beyond the initial yes or agreement. Here lies the realm where true masters of influence operate where the real work of persuasion often begins after the apparent victory has been secured. Why is this final stage so essential for effective persuasion? The answer resides in human psychology and decision-making processes. Persuasion isn't merely about changing minds in the moment, it's about fostering lasting change. It involves ensuring that the decisions people make under your influence stick, that the actions they commit to are carried out, and that the relationships you've built continue to flourish. Consider how often you've made a commitment in the heat of the moment, only to second-guess yourself later. Think of the times when people enthusiastically agreed to something, only to back out or lose interest over time. This phenomenon, the challenge of making persuasion stick, is what we aim to address. To understand this challenge, we turn to the theory of consistency and commitment from social psychology. This theory suggests that people have a strong desire to be consistent in their words, beliefs, attitudes, and actions. Once a choice is made or a stance is taken, individuals experience both internal and social pressures to behave in a way that aligns with that commitment. This desire for consistency can be a powerful tool in the hands of a skilled persuader. By leveraging this psychological principle, you can significantly increase the likelihood that individuals will follow through on their commitments and maintain their newly adopted beliefs or behaviors. But how can we harness the power of consistency and commitment effectively? The first step is to grasp the psychology of commitment. When individuals make a commitment, especially if it's active, public, and voluntary, they are more likely to follow through. This inclination arises from the discomfort of cognitive dissonance, a psychological tension that occurs when actions don't align with one's self-image or public commitments. As a persuader, you can capitalize on this by encouraging people to make active public commitments to the decisions or actions you're advocating. This could involve having them write down their commitment, share it with others, or take a small but concrete step toward a larger goal. Another effective strategy for solidifying agreements is the foot-in-the-door technique. This method involves starting with a small request that is likely to be accepted, then gradually escalating to larger commitments. Each small agreement builds momentum, increasing the likelihood that individuals will agree to more significant requests in the future, as they strive to maintain consistency with their earlier actions. Securing initial commitment is just the beginning. 
To create truly lasting influence, you must build on your successes and maintain engagement over time. This is where the concept of reciprocal altruism comes into play. This theory posits that people are more inclined to continue supporting you or your ideas if they feel the relationship is mutually beneficial. To leverage this, seek ways to provide ongoing value to those you've persuaded. This could involve sharing additional resources, offering support or guidance, or finding ways to help them achieve their own goals. By doing so, you reinforce their initial decision while cultivating a relationship of trust and mutual benefit that can sustain your influence over the long haul. The importance of follow-up cannot be overstated in this process. Many persuasive efforts fail not due to a weak initial argument, but because of inadequate follow-through. Regular check-ins, reminders, and reinforcement can help keep your persuasive message alive in people's minds and counteract the natural tendency to revert to old patterns of thinking or behavior. As you reflect on these principles, consider how you might apply them in your own persuasive endeavors. How can you ensure that your influence is not only impactful in the moment, but also sustainable over time? How can you foster relationships that thrive and evolve, creating a network of support that amplifies your persuasive power? In conclusion, mastering the art of persuasion involves more than merely winning someone over in the moment. It requires a deep understanding of the psychological dynamics at play and a commitment to nurturing relationships that foster enduring influence. By focusing on solidifying your victories and ensuring lasting impact, you can transform your persuasive efforts into powerful, transformative forces that resonate far beyond the initial agreement. To bring the concepts of persuasion into your daily life, a powerful exercise is to create a follow-up plan for your recent persuasive efforts. Think back to a moment when you successfully swayed someone to see things from your perspective or encouraged them to take a specific action. Now. Outline a strategy to reinforce that decision over the next several weeks or months. Consider what reminders you can offer, what additional value you can provide, and how you can help the individual feel confident and motivated about their choice. Another effective tactic is to proactively seek opportunities to reinforce commitments in your daily interactions. When someone agrees to something, don't let it rest there. Find ways to solidify that agreement. This can include prompting them to articulate their commitment in their own words, discussing the next actionable steps or scheduling a follow-up to monitor progress. However, as you experiment with these techniques, it's essential to stay aware of potential pitfalls. One common issue is commitment erosion, which refers to the gradual weakening of a person's resolve over time. To combat this, be proactive by providing reminders and incentives. Celebrate small victories along the way, helping individuals recognize the progress they are making toward their larger goals. Another risk involves relationship strain. In your eagerness to reinforce commitments, you may unintentionally come off as pushy or overbearing. To prevent this, Prioritize open communication and ensure that mutual benefit remains at the forefront. Stay attuned to any shifts in circumstances or needs, 
and be willing to adapt your approach as necessary. As we conclude this discussion, take a moment to reflect on the importance of consistency and commitment and persuasion. Consider how you might apply these principles to fortify your persuasive efforts and create lasting impacts. How can you foster relationships rooted in reciprocal altruism that sustain your influence over time? Remember, the follow-up isn't merely a celebration of past success, it lays the groundwork for future influence. By mastering the art of reinforcing decisions and cultivating long-term relationships, you can turn fleeting moments of persuasion into lasting changes that resonate far beyond the initial interaction. As we look ahead, think about what lies at the end of your journey toward persuasion mastery. How can you synthesize all that you've learned into a cohesive strategy for ongoing influence? Prepare to uncover the ultimate secrets of persuasion mastery, insights that will elevate you from being a skilled practitioner to a true maestro of influence. As we reach the culmination of this exploration into the art and science of persuasion, it's time to step back and take in the larger picture. You've traveled a significant distance since you first opened this discourse on influence. You have examined the intricacies of human psychology, mastered the subtleties of communication, and unlocked the potential of social dynamics. Yet, the true measure of any skill is not only in its acquisition but in its application and continuous refinement. This endgame strategy serves as a synthesis of everything you've absorbed, laying the groundwork for your future as a master persuader. This section isn't just a recap, it's about integrating insights into a flexible, adaptable approach that will serve you for years to come. Reflect on where you were when you began this journey. You may have felt unsure of your ability to influence others or frustrated by your struggle to communicate your ideas effectively. Now envision yourself equipped with the knowledge and skills you've gained. How empowering is it to know you have the tools necessary to navigate even the most challenging conversations with poise? This transformation isn't merely about acquiring techniques or memorizing strategies. It's a fundamental shift in how you approach interactions and relationships. You've developed a new lens through which to perceive the world one that recognizes the undercurrents of influence shaping our social landscape. Let's clarify something important. This newfound power comes with responsibility. The skills you've acquired can either be wielded to manipulate and exploit, or they can be used to inspire, uplift, and create positive change. The choice is yours and it's a choice you'll need to make consciously in every interaction. So, how can the knowledge you've gained empower you? First and foremost, you now possess an enhanced ability to influence and achieve your objectives, whether in personal settings or professional endeavors. You can approach situations with a strategic mindset fully aware of the levers of persuasion at your disposal. Picture yourself entering a negotiation, equipped with the knowledge to frame your proposals for maximum impact. Imagine deftly navigating a tough conversation with a loved one, employing emotional intelligence to find common ground. These aren't just dreams. There are possibilities you can now bring to fruition. Moreover, you'll find newfound confidence in your persuasive interactions. 
This confidence isn't about becoming arrogant or overly self-assured. It's about possessing quiet assurance in your ability to communicate effectively and influence outcomes. This very confidence can itself be persuasive, as people are naturally drawn to those who exude certainty and competence. However, the benefits of mastering persuasion go beyond merely achieving immediate goals. The most profound impact may well be on your relationships. By understanding the principles of influence and communication, you can forge stronger, more meaningful connections with others. Imagine how your interactions might transform when you can genuinely understand and empathize with other perspectives, when you can express your own needs and desires clearly, and when you can identify win-win solutions, even in challenging situations. This enhanced capacity to connect and communicate can lead to deeper, more fulfilling relationships across all areas of your life. You'll find yourself better equipped to resolve conflicts, build consensus, and foster cooperation. In essence, you're not just honing your persuasive abilities, you're evolving into a better partner, friend, colleague, and leader. Now, let's consider the possibilities that these new skills unlock, possibilities that may have once seemed unreachable. One of the most powerful abilities you've cultivated is the knack for navigating complex conversations with ease. Those challenging scenarios that once left you feeling tongue-tied or frustrated like difficult work presentations, sensitive family discussions, or high-stakes negotiations, can now be approached with strategy and self-assurance. Additionally, you've learned to view disagreements as opportunities for influence. Instead of seeing conflicts as roadblocks, you can now see them as chances to engage and persuade effectively. As you prepare to put these skills into practice, reflect on how your newfound knowledge will shape not just your persuasive efforts, but your overall interactions and relationships. With your enhanced capabilities, you're well equipped to influence, connect, and create positive change in every area of your life. Reimagining how we engage with others can lead to deeper understanding and meaningful collaborations. This shift in perspective can open new avenues for growth, not only for ourselves but also for those we interact with. The lessons contained within this book are just the tip of the iceberg. As you put these concepts into practice, you'll notice an intriguing phenomenon, your effectiveness will increase while requiring less and less effort on your part. This is the journey toward true mastery, where persuasion transforms from a learned skill into an instinctual response. Through repetition and refinement, these strategies will become second nature. You will find yourself effortlessly framing your messages for maximum impact, instinctively interpreting emotional cues, and effortlessly building rapport with others. What initially felt like a challenge will evolve into a seamless process, as natural as breathing. This newfound efficiency in reaching your desired outcomes marks the hallmark of a genuine persuasion master. You'll be able to accomplish more while expending less energy, freeing up mental space to tackle higher-level strategic thinking and more complex problems. As we wrap up this journey, I want to impart one final, powerful insight. 
the ultimate reward for those who strive to master the art of persuasion is profound. It's a realization that dawns upon those who reach the pinnacle of influence. The most accomplished persuaders don't merely change minds, they change realities. At the highest levels of mastery, persuasion transcends techniques and strategies, evolving into a tool for shaping the world around you. By influencing how others think, feel, and act, you gain the ability to create ripple effects that can transform communities, organizations, or even entire societies. This isn't about manipulation or control, it's about having the foresight to recognize possibilities that others might overlook. It's about possessing the communication skills to articulate those possibilities in a manner that inspires and motivates others. Moreover, it's about having the strategic acumen to turn those visions into tangible realities. Imagine being able to rally people around a cause you're passionate about, inspiring change within your organization, or guiding your community toward a brighter future. These aren't mere fantasies, they are attainable realities for those who master the art of persuasion. However, with this power comes a significant responsibility. As you continue to sharpen your skills and expand your influence, always remember to use your capabilities ethically and for the greater good. The true measure of a master persuader lies not just in their ability to influence, but in the positive impact they have on the world. As you close this book and return to your daily life, carry with you not only the techniques and strategies you've learned, but also a vision of what's possible. You hold the potential to be more than a skilled communicator, you can become a catalyst for positive change. The journey of mastering persuasion is ongoing. New challenges will arise, new skills will need to be developed, and new heights will beckon. However, with the strong foundation you've built throughout this book and your commitment to continuous learning and ethical practices, the limits of what you can achieve are boundless. As you venture forth, remember that persuasion is not just about getting what you want, it's about crafting the kind of world in which you wish to live. Your endgame strategy transcends winning arguments or swaying decisions, it's about making a lasting, positive impact on your surroundings. The power is in your hands. While embarking on this journey toward mastery and persuasion, keep in mind that true influence often resides in what goes unspoken. The most effective persuaders know that sometimes, less is indeed more. They grasp the delicate balance between speaking and listening, between asserting their views and observing others. This subtle art of communication can elevate your persuasive capabilities to remarkable heights, enabling you to achieve even greater impact with less effort. Curious? There's an expansive realm of quiet influence just waiting to be explored. To truly harness the power of persuasion you've acquired, you'll want to learn how to wield the silent strength of thoughtful communication. For an ultimate guide to this transformative skill, don't miss the audiobook Quiet Confidence, How to Achieve More by Saying Less. Click the center of the video now to continue your journey of transformation. As you immerse yourself in these ideas, consider how they can reshape your interactions and the world around you.
mastering the art of persuasion is not merely about being able to convince others. It's about fostering understanding, building relationships, and creating a positive environment where collaboration thrives. Your newfound skills empower you to inspire change, engage in meaningful dialogues, and create an atmosphere where mutual growth can flourish. Remember, every conversation is an opportunity for influence. The way you listen, respond, and communicate can have a lasting impact on others. Approach each interaction with the intent to understand, and watch how it transforms the dynamic. As you navigate through life, cultivate an awareness of the silent power you hold within your communication style. In essence, what you've learned equips you to be a more effective and thoughtful communicator. You are now capable of not only achieving your goals, but also uplifting those around you. Your role as a persuader extends beyond mere interaction. It encompasses the potential to be a positive force in your community and a source of inspiration for others. As you step into the future, embrace the challenges and opportunities that come your way. Allow your mastery of persuasion to guide you in becoming a true influencer. Use your abilities responsibly and ethically, fostering connections and initiating change in ways that resonate with others. The journey is far from over. And with each step, you have the chance to make a significant difference. With that, carry these insights forward and let them shape your approach to communication. Mastery of persuasion is a lifelong journey filled with growth, learning, and the potential for impact. Embrace the adventure and always strive to be a positive catalyst in the lives of others. Copyright 2024 by Audiobooks Tube Thank you for listening. Please consider to subscribe, like, and share to help the channel growth. New videos on a daily basis.